Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna make a summer tunic which we're gonna embroider and decorate with some metallic thread and hem stitching. Now if you've never heard of hem stitching before it's this really really cute technique which requires a hem stitch needle first and foremost and the hem stitch needle basically makes these holes in your fabric to create a really really cute like hole design kind of. As we're working by machine it's really really easy and you don't have to do anything else than just switching out your needle to the hem stitching needle which is super convenient. And speaking about needles thanks so much to today's sponsor Schmetz who kindly sent over a bunch of needles to show you how easy it is to up your sewing game. And yes I said metallic threads at the very beginning and Everybody who has ever worked with metallic threads or even tried to embroider, it's a pain, like it always tears. But is it actually the thread or has it just always been me not using the right needle for that project? And I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to know and to do to master embroidering metallic threads or other threads like effect yarn and stuff like that. We're gonna use the Schmidt's gold top stitch needle, which actually has a bigger eye so that it is, you know, better suited for metallic threads. And with that, it's actually no problem and it's as easy as sewing with normal thread. So let's get started. So generally a sewing machine needle is made up of different parts. So let's work our way from top to bottom I guess so from the point where you insert it into your machine to the tip of the needle. The part that gets inserted into the machine is actually known as the shank and there are two different types of shanks. So there is one with a flat part and then there is a round one and depending on what kind of machine you're using you either need the flat one or the round one. Usually for domestic machines you're using a flat shank needle and for industrial machines like the one I am using you using a round shank needle. When you move a little bit lower in the you know anatomy of the needle I guess you have this groove to protect the thread while sewing where the thread kind of is laying inside of and that just protects the thread while sewing. On the other side a little bit lower you have like an indent you've probably noticed it before and that's called the scarf and the scarf actually creates more space for the hook so that the loop is easier to catch to form a stitch if that makes sense it's very like technical but that's what the scarf is for <laughs> and then last but not least you have obviously the point and the tip of the needle so both of these vary in shape depending on what special type of needle you're using for your project which also goes back to what i was saying in the very beginning you always need to use a specific needle that is you know made for your project's needs like not every needle works for every project and vice versa you have to be specific about what needle you use to actually master your projects. Like for me, once I started actually like going more into the topic of sewing machine needles and kind of, you know, educating myself on what different needle shapes do for your project and why they are used specifically for that thing, to be able to actually differentiate between the different needles you know, to not have to look like this at the needle and, you know, compare each needle. <laughs> you actually have some color markings that Schmitz uses on top of the needle, like right where the shank is, like right below that. And that tells you what kind of needle it is and the size of your needle, actually. So in the needle ABC, which actually is this small booklet right here, you can check out very easily everything you need to know uh, about your needles. Like there is a overview in the very beginning Beginning, what type of needles there are or Schmitz has. Then there is a overview about the anatomy of the needle that I was just explaining, the tips and of course the color markings which is super important so that you always know what needle you're using. And then the rest is just you know every needle that Schmitz carries explained um, and the use case for that which is also super handy so if you have a project and you're not really sure what kind of needle you use you can just check this booklet right here and also on their website you have everything that i was just telling you is also on their website and you can check which needles work for which type of project so that is super super interesting and so important so i am super excited to actually show you two different needles in, uh, uh, you know, 
more detail, I'm gonna use the gold top stitch needle that I was talking about earlier with the bigger eye for metallic threads. And then I'll also be using the hem stitch needle, which is used for effectful stitches where you create holes near the entrance point of your needle. So that's a really, really cute look. And I'm super excited to actually get started and make a cute little summer dress with these techniques. So let's get started with this project. I have my front piece on this side already finished and done. I have the embroidery already started here. You can kind of see it. And I have to add like a teeny tiny bit on the bottom here. It's more or less half of the embroidery that I have chosen for this. So I'm just gonna move this up and it's just this small section down here that I have to still do. And hopefully I can, you know, fit this into my hoop. And then it's just a matter of positioning it correctly. I can use the precise positioning option on my machine which is really handy for this project and now I'm just gonna have this you know sit tightly and I also want these to sit straight and not wobbly so I'm kind of pulling on either side and now I can just go over to my machine obviously the Schmade's gold top stitch needle is already in otherwise I would have not been able to do this embroidery with the metallic thread let's go over to the machine and actually start the sewing process or like finish the sewing process here Okay, so I just took out the embroidery and I'm just gonna go quickly over the whole thing with my iron just to erase the markings that I did before because the fabric automatically shrinks a tiny bit after you unhoop it. So that's why I like to just leave it in this big piece of fabric and then, you know, take off the backing paper and actually redraw the shape and then cut it. So like this. And now I like to get my other piece that is already ready and put it so that the embroidery is parallel to each other. And then I'm taking my paper pattern and use an erasable marker to draw on the shape of the pattern and cut it out afterwards. And with that, the embroidery on my front piece is prepared. And I wanna go ahead and actually also add the hem stitching like right next to it so that I can completely start the sewing process in one go and not have to worry about adding decorative things while stuff is already put together, especially right here. Like you don't wanna have the color already on your piece when you do the hem stitching just because you want it to, you know, continue below the collar, I guess. So I'm gonna do that as well. And as I said before, I'm gonna use the hem stitch needle that just also gets inserted into your sewing machine as any other needle as well. Obviously I'm gonna change my embroidery machine to a sewing machine and then I can, you know, just simply stitch down next to the embroidery. I'm gonna use this stitch here. I think that looks really, really cute. Right next to it, I think will also look really, really nice to have like some sort of border, I guess, in a matching color. So let's do that. To sew the decorative hem stitching, I'm gonna use the Schmidt's hem stitch needle. And this needle just looks super cool, in my opinion, like a sword or wings, which by the way, also the needle goes by. So it's also called the wing needle or the sword needle. And the wings on either side of the needle like shape the hole while sewing. So that's what makes the larger hole basically, but it doesn't cut the thread of your fabric. It just pushes it to the side. So that together with the tension of your embroidery or sewing stitch it just creates this bigger hole and also just a small disclaimer the automatic threader does not work with the hem stitch needle if you have one so you'll have to manually thread that but you know that's fine and since we're working with zigzaggy stitches make sure the wings of your needle don't actually strike your sewing foot your presser foot so always check with your hand wheel to see whether it has enough space or if it strikes the presser foot because then you'll have to adjust the width of your zigzag stitch obviously to avoid damage of either your 
machine or the needle. And for the zigzag stitches, I also did like a try out piece right here, which I suggest you do too, just to see which stitch you actually like the best. Like my machine actually has a selection of stitches that work with the needle. Obviously a normal zigzag stitch would also work and you can go and search on your mach machine for different decorative stitches that might also work for hem stitching. It's just best if the stitch actually is sewn multiple times, like the needle goes into the hole multiple times because that just makes the result better and the hole bigger. And that is the hem stitch done. Let's actually remove the backing. So you can see it's super easy with this tear away one like so and the front pieces are prepared so let's actually get started with uh, assembling the pattern so we have darts in the front and the back pieces so we're going to close them just by putting right sides together like that and just top stitching over here i'm going to do the same for the back dart and then all the darts in the facing as well so we're going to have all front darts and all back darts in shell and facing closed Now with all of the darts done, let's actually iron them to the side. I'm gonna iron this one to this side as it already folds over there. Super clean finish, I love that. For the shell, I'm gonna iron the darts in the back to the side and then for the facing, I'm gonna do, you know, the opposite of what I did for the shell so that once both are put together, they nest and it all, you know, nothing bulks up. Okay. And with those done, I can now put the shoulder seams together in both the shell and the facing. So I have my front pieces and then I have my back shell piece, which I'm just gonna put right on top and I'm gonna close the shoulder seams here and I'm gonna repeat the same for the facing. I'm gonna iron the seam allowance of my shoulder seams towards the back in the shell. So as we're gonna add a zipper to the left side seam, I like to leave the collar to be the last step because then we can always, you know, use the, the neckline to, if we have to turn something around. So I'm just gonna continue, I'm gonna put this aside and I'm gonna continue with the sleeves, which are these, you know, flared sleeves. And I'm gonna put these onto the still open side side seam of my bodice. So for the sleeve, as per usual, you can always determine the side where the sleeve goes into. You can see that the slope right here is like steeper than it is here. You can also always check the notches, the sleeve notches in your sleeve pattern as the back sleeve notch is further up the hill than the front sleeve notch. So I can determine that this sleeve goes into this arm's eye. So I'm just gonna put right sides together, align the shoulder notch with the shoulder seam. And the sleeve is a tiny bit bigger than the arm's eye. So you have to ease both pieces together. Obviously you're gonna match up the sleeve notches like so and I'm gonna put the sleeve into my arm's eye and repeat the same for the other side. So to iron the arm's eye, I like to use my round tailor's hem so I can put my arm's eye over top here and then I'm just gonna iron the seam allowance into the sleeve. Now I'm going to close my right side seam because the zipper is gonna be on the left. So this is my right side seam, that's the left one. I'm gonna leave that open completely, but I'm gonna close the right one. So I'm gonna put right sides together of front and back. I'll match up the underarm and then I'm also gonna match up the sleeve hem. And I'm gonna iron my side seam open. And that's the sleeve on the right side done. So in order to continue, I actually also have to close the side seam in my facing. So this is basically the opposite of what your shell side is that is closed because the piece is inside out. So if you're confused over that, 
just put your piece with the wrong side out and put it on top and then you know exactly which side to close so it would be this side for me because that's how it's going to lay in the end as well it's going to sit right here on the inside so this side has to be closed which i'm quickly going to do as well i'm going to leave the other side open i need to finish the front the center front seam right here before i am able to actually continue with putting on the skirt since i have my zipper here on the left side seam i need this to be closed the center front because my skirt has a fold there it doesn't have a seam so i need to finish the seam so what i'm doing for that then is to just put right sides of my facing and my shell together i'm just gonna sew right here and under stitch the seam so that it neatly folds towards the facing side Now let's actually iron this so that the ditch of the seam is only visible on the facing side. Like that, and that is what it looks like. The other side gets a button placket facing. So since these two sides only butt together, they're not overlapping. They're just going to sit like this. It's, you know, I don't want this to open up. And if it does, then I want to have something behind that so that the skin is not showing because like it's a prominent area right here in the front. So I want to add a button placket facing. The button placket facing is pretty straightforward. It's just this rectangular piece of pattern and I'm gonna iron it in half firstly that I have the center line and then you're gonna find the waistline notch right here so that is important because until there everything has to be finished like the edge has to be finished now I'm gonna put right sides together and I'm gonna mark my facing notch which is right here and I'm gonna sew from that notch over here that corner and into the fold line and then on top here I'm just gonna sew this line so i'm gonna finish basically the upper edge and then the lower edge which sits below the waistline to turn this right sides over i'm going to cut towards the stitching line right where the notch is i'm gonna cut away all of the corners so that they don't bulk up on the inside and now i'm just gonna turn this right sides out and that is basically it. I'm just gonna give this another iron and that's your button placket facing. So the button placket facing sits on your left side and it sits right here. So from the waistline, you wanna measure one centimeter up, which is your stitching line then. And there you wanna put it right sides together like so. You're gonna see this little square right here, one centimeter up and then one centimeter in, and that is the stitching line. And this matches up exactly with your notch, which marks the end of your button placket facing. So I'm just gonna pin it in place here and then I'm gonna take out my facing and put it also right sides together with my whole front seam and I'm gonna cover the button placket with that. So you're gonna find a notch here in the facing as well for the end of the button placket. You wanna match that up as well like so and now you wanna sew this seam as well and also understitch this. Let's also iron the seam. So it's the same as for the other seam. You wanna iron the ditch towards the facing side. We can continue and add the skirt on because now we have a finished edge down here. Your facing can be tucked away under so that it is not in the way. We're gonna hand sew that down once the skirt is in place. But basically we can butt these together now like so. I'm also gonna add a needle so that this stays put because I wanna be super careful that down here there is not gonna be a gap. Let's put this away for now because we need to put the skirt together. So this right here is my back and then this up here is my front. And as I said before, the front piece lays on full. That's why it's double the size. And we're gonna put a right sides of back and front pieces together and close the right side. On the left side, there is the zipper in place so you can't put them together yet. I added an inseam pocket actually to my right side seam. You can do that too. It's just a simple inseam pocket. You don't have to necessarily do that. It is obviously just on 
on one side because on the other side the zipper actually prohibits me from putting a pocket in there as well. And now you want to iron the seam allowance to the front here in this side seam. I'm going also really, really careful as the side seam lays on the bias. But if you uh, want to prevent any stretching, that's what I did here with this bias seam as well, you just need to add a small interfacing tape with a stay stitch so that this does no longer stretch out. Let's close the center back in the skirt and then we can put the skirt onto the bodice. And I'm gonna put the right sides together with my piece. I need to overlock this first as well since this is also overlocked and then I'm gonna iron it open. But basically I'm gonna put right sides together and close that. So now I'm gonna add my bodice to the skirt and I only want to add my shell bodice. So what I have to do for that is to first of all clip into the seam right here so that I can fold this up so that I'm only sewing my shell seam allowance. And I wanna do the same for the other side. That also just gets folded up like this. And now these two pieces need to sit right next to each other. So I have my center front marked right here. I'm now gonna put right sides together of my skirt and bodice. And I'm gonna try to be as precise as I can when positioning these two next to each other as I don't wanna have any gap right here. So I'm gonna butt them together like this. And now it's just a matter of matching up the rest. And now I can sew the waistline shut and I'm gonna be super precise at the center front right here to have no visible gaps. Maybe I'm even gonna switch to a one-sided foot so that I don't have to sew over this bulk right here. And now let's take out all of the needles to check out if we manage to actually sew this nicely or if we have to redo this. It looks like I managed to do this quite nicely. So I'm super pleased with that result. The placket facing goes a teeny tiny bit lower to cover all of that. So we're gonna hand sew that onto the skirt afterwards once everything is done. But basically that's how it looks like. So that's really nice how that worked out. And I'm gonna iron the seam allowance into the skirt downwards. And just to put some pressure off of that area, I'm gonna put a needle in here so that it's not that seam down he here where all of the pressure when this gets opened up is on. I'm gonna add a bar tag probably somewhere here to do the same thing. The skirt is on now, so we can add the zipper in our left side seam so that this whole thing doesn't look as crazy as it does anymore. I have my side seam facing up now and I'm gonna grab a zipper. I don't have a green one but I have any of these colors so I'm just gonna check which one is you know the least visible and they're all quite visible <laughs> so what I like to do with zippers that go into your side seam is to start sewing lower than your underarm seam right here but not with like any notches or whatever but I am just gonna align the upper part where the zigzag is I'm just gonna align that with the underarm seam because that makes me start to sew lower anyways already. So I don't have to do any notches or anything like that. And it's super easy to align it with the other side because I also have that seam which I need to match up anyways. So I'm just gonna have the zigzag right here touch that seam and then I know where to place my zipper. So I'm just gonna put the zipper in by just not stretching either the zipper nor the fabric and I'm gonna have the zipper go down until 26 centimeters below the waistline. I'm gonna use my zipper foot to actually sew the zipper in. So I'm just gonna close this now so that I can use pins to actually mirror the placements, especially the waistline. So I'm gonna start at the waistline with the waistline seam allowance facing into the skirt. And then up here, I can have the, the zigzag touch the seam and the in-between. 
just gets matched up. And now I can go ahead and also sew in that zipper side. So basically now it's time to close the remaining side seam, like the hem and also the sleeve. I like to just open this up and then put right sides together here. You can also tuck this piece here under like so and have it out of the way while sewing. And now I have a few points that need to get matched up. Obviously the underarm and then the zipper. And I'm not gonna sew any further than where I stopped sewing the zipper in. So I have my stitches right here and then I also have them on the other side. Right here, I'm gonna use my pin to actually match them up. And that is until where I want to stitch and not any further. And then obviously the rest of the sleeve can be matched up until the hem. And at the hem itself, I'm gonna align the hem and then obviously the point where we stopped sewing. And with that, I can also close the remaining seam right here at the hem. So once this is turned right sides out, you can actually see everything take shape now. This is what the underarm looks like. It is actually really, really pretty and neat down here somewhere here is where the zipper ends and the hem part I'm just gonna iron open because the zipper already lays open like that so I'm just gonna continue and the sleeve I'm actually gonna iron towards the back as I overlocked both of the seam allowances together now let's turn this whole thing back right sides out so to actually be able to sew the facing onto the zipper, everything needs to be, you know, laying as it's supposed to lay. So the facing on the inside also needs to be where it's supposed to be. And then right here we have the facing that will be attached to this side and the other facing side that gets attached to this side. And we have enough room down here to actually be able to kind of pull this out and under so that we can actually put right sides together of the facing and have, you know, it not being twisted on the inside. Put it in the correct position and then go from the waistline into the seam. So I'm gonna pull everything through the waistline or as much as I need as it's just a small little section. And now I can just align these two and sew this with a one-sided zipper foot and then I'm gonna, you know, put everything right sides out again and then do the same for the other side. And once I turn everything wrong sides out so that the facing is on the outside, I actually have access to the seam allowances in both the arm's eye and then also the waistline. So I'm just gonna overlock it. So let's do that then to the other side as well. So with all of that prepared now, we can go ahead and do the final pattern piece, which is the collar. So I'm gonna put this away really quick. And then we have both the collar facing and the collar shell. The collar shell is the one that is a teeny tiny bit bigger. So you can always check that by putting both of them on top of each other. So for me, the one that lays on top is the facing and this one is the shell. Now the shell, I want to prepare by ironing the seam allowance upwards, like so. And now I can put right sides together of shell and facing collar. I wanna have the iron seam allowance folded up and I can just sew those two pieces together, like so. And I'm just gonna sew from here to here. Now I can go ahead and clip away the seam allowance pretty drastically at the round areas, like so, and turn the collar right sides out and iron. So I wanna have the facing facing upwards so that I see where the ditch is as I want the ditch of the seam to be on the facing side as per usual, like this.
and that's the teeny tiny collar prepared. And you can decide to, you know, top stitch around the collar once it's on the piece. Like you don't want to do that right now. And now I'm gonna put the facing of the collar, so the piece that is not ironed inwards, this side right here. I want to put that together with the actual facing. So I'm gonna align the center back in both, like all three, the facing, the shell and the collar facing. Then the front also gets aligned with the front of the dress. And then you're gonna find a shoulder notch in the collar, which you're gonna match up with the shoulder seam, of course. Now, in order to sew these together nicely, you probably want to clip into the seam allowances because they need to, you know, open up a tiny bit as they are curved in the opposite way. And now you can actually put these together nicely. And the same thing you do for the front neckline. And now you sew this collar on. Now once done with that, basically the only thing left is to fold the prepared collar over top here. And it should look fairly neatly and like go over top there with no problems. I'm just gonna make sure that the fold line here is over top of the stitching line so that you don't see it anymore. And then I'm just gonna go around and pin the collar in place so that I can then very closely to that edge top stitch the collar down like that. And I'm just gonna go over top here. Okay, the collar is on now, so I'm just gonna do another decorative hem stitch right here. The same one as I did right here, just to have, you know, another feature. Obviously, you saw that I already hemmed my sleeve and also my hem down here. I just did a double folded hem five millimeters and top stitched it and that was that. So for the closure, actually, I'm gonna do hooks and eyes because obviously if you do buttonholes, then they're gonna be off to the side. You could, if you wanted to do like a double row and do like fake buttons here and then the real ones here and then you also have it symmetric. I don't really wanna do that. So I'm gonna do hooks and eyes and basically I'm just gonna sew them in by hand, obviously. So I'm gonna have my hooks placed underneath here so that they are flush against the edge right here. And I'm gonna place them right where that circle is so that I have, you know, a guidance. And then on the other side right here, I'm gonna place the eye part, so right here. Basically, that's my closure, apart from the zipper, obviously. I'm gonna, you know, sew that on off camera <laughs> while watching something on the TV. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. A special thanks again to Schmitz for sponsoring today's video. I put all of the links and all of the needles that I used in the description box down below, so go check it out. As I mentioned in the video already, everything that I showed you is obviously also available in English, so you know, if you don't speak German, obviously you can still access all of the info and it's super interesting. So check it out through the link down below. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe and ring the bell so you will get notified every time that I post. I post on Sundays so you can keep an eye out for that. Also drop a comment that would help me out tremendously. It pushes the video out to other people who might also be interested in my content. So thanks so much for that. Also down below are the links to my socials where you find short format content on all the projects that I upload. So that might be of interest to you as as well and hit follow there. The most direct way to support me and keep videos just like this one coming is to head over to my Etsy store where you also find the pattern of today's video. It's also linked directly down below. A special thanks to my channel members. You can get exclusive benefits through the link in the description down below. So thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you next Sunday. Bye guys!